Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Fame First of all, I'd like to um, thank all of the spiritual teachers in the line of the Guru Parampara who have most mercifully shared this information in such a way that it could reach the whole world in these days and times. And I've been inspired to speak something specific and how it relates to Krishna and to hopefully share with you some information about Bhagavan. Um, I'm sure I've shared that information before and I think that it's always important to reiterate these topics of Krishna Katha or glorifying Krishna through descriptions and speeches. And I hope that all of the Vaishnavas and all of the devotees in all three worlds are pleased with the, the few short words that I hope to present here. Um, first of all, me, I'm Capri Scott, Sun Man Part 2, right? And I'm something like a celebrity. And I could go down the line, I could name you who are watching, you are something like a celebrity. Whoever's watching, it doesn't matter. It could be Jay-Z, Beyonce, you're something like a celebrity. But when we're dealing in terms of fame, like right now in the world, I would say the most famous person is Donald Trump. Toss up between Donald Trump and Bill Gates. Those are the most famous people in the world right now, right? And I just want to point out that there's other planets out there. There's other civilizations out there. But let's not even go that far. There's civilizations of ants right here on this planet Earth. And they have no idea who a Donald Trump is. Birds. Alligators. They have no idea who or what a Donald Trump is. However, amongst human society, pretty much Donald Trump is the most famous person, right? And that's just what's going on on this small, insignificant speck of dust floating somewhere on the outer bands of one out of billions and trillions of galaxies like we're very 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 small very insignificant but however for what it's worth trump is the most famous so i'm not a celebrity compared to trump i'm just something like a celebrity a few people know me but not everybody knows me and trump is just one of the most famous people who are living i mean we've had great historical personalities that we know of like let's say uh martin luther king or rosa parks or uh, muhammad ali or george washington or george jefferson many um historic personalities that have lived in this world and they were famous but nobody knows them on those other planets in those other civilization where people are just having a regular time eating food living and dying and looking at the stars on their planets, they have people who are the most famous personalities on their planets as well. Let's not assume that like humans is, are the end all to be all humans of Earth. Like we're not the greatest thing that the universe has accomplished. We must remember our humility so we'll know our place and function properly. We're not the greatest thing that has ever been accomplished in the universe, okay? But it is a very significant thing because from the human body, from the human platform, no, way, no matter where you live in the universe, you have an opportunity. You have a certain kind of brain that allows you to understand and to grow in consciousness of the absolute truth. Um, lower kingdoms and lower animals don't have that ability to comprehend the absolute truth. But at least you human being with your human brain, you can ponder these things and that's why i'm bringing up this video because we're pondering the absolute truth this name bhagavan right he's it basically means the source of everything or he who possesses all things in full not partially like trump who's only known on a small globe to a small percentage of the population of that earth 
He's not known. Maybe they know him on the moon, but further than that, nobody really knows Trump. Okay? Let's just be honest. And I don't know who's famous on those planets. But what I do know is that all of those planets that we know of have some kind of correspondence to either a Vedic deity, a Hindu deity, an African deity or a Kemetic deity. And remember, in Africa, there's hundreds of thousands of religious and cosmological systems, indigenous. Just like in India, there's thousands of indigenous cosmological and religious systems. Not every country is not all one thing. Right? So, there's correspondences of planets to certain names and certain beings. And these planets have somebody famous. Like Saturn has a is said to have a corresponding deity that controls that planet. And Earth and like Venus and, and all of these things are named after Roman and other African gods. Other ancient beings, higher beings. So we know that by identifying a planet with a deity, that that deity also has a certain amount of fame within the universe. But what about people who don't live in that solar system? Do they know? Do they even know them by that name? So this fame that even the gods that we worship or believe in or the higher forces, you know, these Elohim, these Allahuma, these Loa, these Netaru, um, oh, so many, so many words, these Orisha. These Ankisi, all of these forces that people know about, these Devatas, uh, the God of the sun, moon, and rain, they all have a certain amount of fame, but they're not famous everywhere. So here's the thing. What we have to do is trace out the source of all fame. The person who embodies the concept of fame. That's what you're looking for is the embodiment because from the body is where you get the nectar. Just like Christians worship the blood of Jesus. From the body of Jesus comes their nectar, which is blood. So likewise, from the body of Bhagavan comes a form of nectar called fame. Therefore, we call Krishna Bhagavan what is loosely interpreted as God because he is the source of all fame. He's actually known in all three worlds on all 14 planetary systems. His name is known. There are entire planets. There are planets and star systems where almost everybody hates Krishna because they are aligned with a being, a group of beings called Asuras. Recently, we had that scripture taught to us, that science taught to us in the name of a person named Hiranyakashipu, who was the king of all demons in the universe. And these events didn't necessarily take place on this paradigm or this version of earth these things could have taken place in other dimensions or in faraway star systems because we have information that tells us that in the golden age <clears throat> the demonic entities and the devotee entities those who were on the side of Bhagavan lived on different planetary systems different galaxies they didn't live on the same planet but then in the next age which was the Silver Age, they came down on the same planet, they incarnated on the same planet, but lived in different continents, different families. But then, in the Bronze Age, those demons and those devotees, those angels and demons, were born in the same family. That's when you start getting messages of great conflicts on the planet Earth, right? And the last great conflict that happened was in 3100 BCE. 3,100 years before the era of Christ or 5,000 years ago was the last great family conflict in which family was fighting each other and in the same family, some of them were devotees and some of them were demons. Straight up, it's called Mahabharat and, and the Battle of Kurukshetra. And then in the age of Kali Yuga, here's the last age, the Iron Age of Quarrel and Hypocrisy. This is the age where the demon and the devotee manifest in the same body you know and that's a very sobering thought so when we're dealing with Bhagawan we're dealing with the source of all fame whoever is the most famous person those leaders of those planetary systems those demigods that we worship the Orisha the Neturu all of them the Roman Zeus and all of them Aphrodite and Titans let me tell you something the rulers the people who are in the know just like when you join 
a secret society, let's say you join Illuminati or you join the Freemason, you can't expect the person on the first level or the third level or the fourth level or the ninth level to know as much as a person who's, let's say, on the 30th level or the 31st level, 32nd level of that movement. They're not going to know the same secrets. But the leaders of those planetary systems, even Trump, he's not a leader of the planetary systems. So he doesn't know about galactical order. One time, long time ago, I watched a movie called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Apparently, there's more than one version. I watched the most recent version, the, the modern version, the one with most definite. And something interesting happened. Planet Earth was scheduled to be destroyed in that movie. And the reason why they wanted to destroy the Earth was because they were building an intergalactical highway through our region of space. And when one Earth man found out that most death was from outer space and he told the Earth man, yeah, you were supposed to, the residents of your planet were either supposed to put up a petition with the office. The office is apparently in the center of the galaxy. We were supposed to put up a petition with that office so that they wouldn't destroy Earth or we were supposed to all be relocated, but we never contacted nobody. So there's things that's going on above our heads that we're not aware of when we join an organization or when we're born on a planet or when we are born into a religious system there's things going on on higher levels that we're not aware of but the leaders of the planetary systems tell you interest something interesting about them the leaders of the planetary systems all hanker to get the dust that comes from the ground of krishna's feet the ground that he walks on, they want to get that dust just on the crowns that's on their head. That's a symbol of pride for them. This tells you the level that Krishna is on. He is Bhagawan. He is the source of all of their fame. When we're dealing with fame, something very interesting. If a person is very strong, they will be famous. If a person is very beautiful, they will be famous. If they have a lot of knowledge, they will be famous. So if you have knowledge, strength, beauty, you are famous. If you have riches, you are famous. And if you even have renunciation, you are famous. What do I mean by renunciation? There's different levels of and forms of renunciation. But to make it clear for everybody, let's imagine a monk. A monk who undergoes austerities anywhere in the forest, Himalaya mountains, Mount Kailash, Kashmiri, wherever, wherever. In the pyramids of Egypt. South America, North America, Serpent Mounds, and a yogi just goes there and sits there and meditates for 12 years and doesn't eat any water, doesn't eat any food, doesn't drink any water, just lives in one spot like this, in a position sitting like this, what they call Indian style, for 12 years. Everybody would be amazed at that person. That person would be famous. Because he's renounced the whole world. He said he don't even need a house to live in. He don't need clothes. I'm going to sit here naked for 12 years and just think on higher thoughts. You know, people can do that. So they become famous. So all of those six opulences I just mentioned, whether it's renunciation, whether it's wisdom or knowledge. There was a person who was the smartest person in the universe. There was a person who was the most famous in the universe. A person who was the richest, a person who was the strongest, a person who was the most beautiful. So that all attractive person, the, the one who we get all of those attributes from, the most beautiful woman on earth gets her beauty from Bhagawan or Bhagavan, the person who possesses all beauty. The smartest person on the planet gets their knowledge, their intellectual acumen from the person who possesses all of that. So I just want to I want to show you. That the richest person on the planet Earth, where do they get their riches from? Most likely minerals. Whether it's gold or, you know, they control minerals, they control resources. There is no man on this Earth who has created gold. So the gold was already on the Earth when the human civilization began. So who is the source of all gold? Who is the source of all chemicals? That person must be the richest person. It's not an abstract thing. It's not an abstract thing either, you know? The person who created the oil by which all your industries run. We want to find out the source of all of that. And that is Bhagavan. And to realize this person Bhagavan, it comes in three levels. 
It comes in the form of the absolute all-encompassing reality. We call that the Supreme Brahman. Whatever you can sense with your material senses around you, all the energy, all the material, that is one form of God. That's the impersonal form of God called Brahman. Then there's another step, the step of God where everybody say, God is in my heart. He's in my heart. He know what I mean. He know my intention. Sometime I'm about to do the wrong thing. And God, I hear, lo and behold, God would touch my heart. And he would hear me. And he would say something to me. And I went left instead of going right. And I went, if I would have went right, there was a tiger loose on that block that would have ate me alive. Or you can have a, a, another you can be touched by God inside in another way. You could go to church. Somebody could lay hands on you and you have a spiritual revelation or an epiphany. That's because God is inside of you. So one aspect of God is impersonal. Another aspect of God is always with you. Whether you're born, whether you live, whether you die, whether you believe in rebirth or not, that form of God is with you in your heart. God is in your heart. So we call that aspect of God Paramatma or the Supreme Para, Param, Supreme, Beyond, Atma, Soul. Paramatma is there in your soul. Good. Then we come to Bhagavan himself. The most famous name for this Bhagavan is Krishna. But he is known by many names, by many people of many different beliefs and faiths. However, the chief name is Krishna, which means to attract. It comes from the root word K-R-S, Karsh. Karsh means to draw, to pull, to cultivate, and it also means charismatic. So Karsh, Na, to pull, he pulls Na, us. Just like na is short for nahnu in Arabic. We, nahnu. He pulls us. The most attractive person in the universe pulls your attention to him. And again, I said some planetary systems hate Krishna. But they're attracted to him through hate. Just like you think about your enemy and ways to destroy your enemy. It's still a form of attraction. It's just a form of dark attraction, but it's still there. The most famous person is all attractive. Just to hear about Krishna makes you curious. You can't be curious about something unless you're attracted to it in some way. There's a there's a magnet, there's an unseen link between you and this supreme person, and the chief name of which is Krishna tends to draw and attract the living entities. Okay? So please do more research on the concept of God from the oldest perspectives known to the universe. You know, and then it will give you more clarity in your current belief systems. But go always go for the oldest source of information because you want that information that that was around when the universe was superheated and began to cool down to a vibration that we could understand. You can't understand things on a very high frequency. You can't even hear certain sounds around you that the dogs could hear. So you got to wait till it cools down. The universe cooled down to a point where our dull senses could perceive what we're doing around us. But that's not even the real us. That's not the original us. So, yes, I wanted to talk heroically and victoriously about Bhagavan and share that with you. Please like, share, comment. Let everybody know about it. All right. Bhagavan is the greatest thing that could happen. And he never happened. He always was. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare.